Maybe I'll turn the light on. Maybe not. Maybe no one will come. Maybe they will. sticker I could I don't think anybody's coming today just fine hi hi Rosemary hi Sherry I'm just piddling around. Um, I thought I'd just turn the camera on. Nothing exciting. I'm going to fill some fountain pens that need filling and try not to make a mess. Um, but other than that, I'm sure Rosemary is working it on something in the background. So how are you guys? Cleaning up a little bit here and there. I mean, I didn't say to anybody that I was going on. I just turned again, turned the camera on. It's set up all the time, so it's no no big deal to just literally go to StreamYard and create. You know, these things, these bags. I don't know why I even bother keeping them in the bag. And the little flippy things drive me nuts. So, I'll take care of those real quickly. I don't need that. And I don't need that. Oh, waiting for the roofers. Ooh. Such hot weather, right? You'd think they'd want to be there like at 7 o'clock in the morning when it was at least cool. Yeah, I had the air conditioner guy here two days in a row, and they actually ended up being phenomenal. The first guy came in. Uh, I have a mini split out on the porch, and he looked at it, and he said, you know, you've got a, you've got a leak, like a Freon leak. He said, it's not called Freon anymore. It's something else that's more kinder to the environment. And he said, I don't want to charge you for a, a maintenance visit because, you you know, you really need a service call. And he spent some time, you know, finding the leak and wanting to show me where the leak was. It was on the outside unit. So he called his boss and then the, the boss said they could have somebody out here tomorrow morning, which was yesterday. And... So a, a guy showed up probably about 10 o'clock yesterday morning and he had no idea what he was here for. And I got a little nervous, you know, like, oh my God, he doesn't even know. And I said, no, this is not a maintenance call. This is a service call. The other guy found a leak on the outside unit and it took me a couple of minutes to explain to him what he was here for, which made me very nervous. And he said, okay, let me go, let me go call the office to find out what's up. So he called the office and then he came back and uh, he said, now, oh yeah, now I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm going, oh shit, now you know. But anyway, he turned out to know what he was doing, you know what I mean? And he was here for about two hours. He took the whole unit apart and then he was outside and they had to put a whole new flange on the copper wire, copper tubing that goes to the 
one of the unit outside. Um, and um, so I was expecting a pretty stiff bill. And he hands me the bill. And I look at it. And I say to him, I said, it's only $95? And he said, yeah, I just charge you. To, you know, I, you know, I didn't charge you for the repair. I said, oh, well, thank you very much. And uh, so I was thrilled. And then I called the office to figure, to find out how to pay for it. And they said, well, call back tomorrow, three o'clock or so. And then, you know, we'll have, we'll have his invoice and then we can figure out, you know, what's the best way to pay it. I thought, wow. So I was very pleased. And I told the lady at the office that both guys did a really good job. So my split air unit is cranking out some serious cold air out onto the porch. The porch is a bitch to, to cool. I mean, part of me feels really guilty about the fact that I've turned that into a year round room and that I'm even, that I'm even air conditioning it because there's no insulation out there. I mean, they're vinyl, they're acrylic windows that are closed tight and everything, but it's not insulated, you know, and it's, but it's working. It's, it's, and before it was running all the time and could never get the room down below 80. And now I turn it on, man, and it's, it's running at, you know, I have it set at 78 and it's at 76 out there. So I've cranked it up, up to 80, but I'm, I'm pleased. Uh, yeah. I'm, hi, Jane. Anyway. Yeah. It's actually, I know everywhere else is pretty brutally hot, but honestly, for Florida, this time of year, our temperatures are really normal. They're normally hot. You know what I mean? Not Nothing extreme. Um, you know, 95 for this time of year is not off the charts. And it was a high of 92 yesterday for the end of July, where I am in Florida. That's not crazy weather. Um, and I know, the, you know, parts of the country are like, in the hundreds with the heat index over a hundred, but that's not the case, you know? And I was watching, we have a weather guy here called Mike. And then you all have Ryan, you all, all you all Ryan. And I just saw, hi, Teresa. I just saw the tail end of Mike's stream. He streams every morning at nine 19. I I'm sure that stands for something, but I have no idea. And he was saying that the tropics were getting stirred up. And then I go to the national weather. I have the hurricane app on my phone. And I looked at that. And, you know, these guys make big hype. Yeah, there's three things kind of out there with like less than a 20% chance of coming becoming something. You'll be 100 and you know, those guys are going to actually work on the roof today. Holy mackerel. I mean, I know they're used to it, but that's crazy. Now, I forgot you're getting a whole roof on your studio and partial roof on the house, or is it the other way around? Or are you having them both done? That's crazy. It'll be, it'll be loud. It'll be noisy. Are they are they going to have to tear off a layer of shingles? Are they able? Are they going to be able to put a layer? Because sometimes they can do a couple a couple of layers of shingles, and they don't have to tear it right down to the plywood, which is oh, just working. Oh no, not working. Just coming to sign papers and the details. Okay, all righty, yeah. That makes much more sense. You know, when they start tearing that up, I mean, your dogs are going to go nuts. Because it sounds like they're literally coming through the roof. We've had our roof done. I had the roof done in the other house. The roof on this house is new-ish. It's, I think, about three or four years old. But that was weather-related, right? You got, you got... Oh, wow. So you can't stack them up. Not even one layer. Wow. 
I know after a while, it's a lot of weight on the structure of the house, but you'd think they'd give you one layer, like, you know, total of two. Yeah, that's a lot of, that's a lot of labor there. So I was watching uh, a little bit of Kathy Arbor yesterday when she was mixing colors and I was trying to mix some colors. Oh, wow. Hail damage. Must have been pretty big hail. Wow. Was the insurance is covering it? I mean, minus your deductible. I think that's what you said, which is good. Here, they just, they just uh, gave us the, posted the new fees for next year to live here. And they, man... When you look at it, it looks like an enormous amount, you know, it's going up. But then when you compare it to last year, the total increase is $30. So I guess, I, you know, that's not too bad for everything. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I have a USAA, which is the military insurance. And I've been with them ever since I've been driving. But I'm always afraid, I and mean, I've never had a claim, but I'm always afraid. They're, they're very quick to, to drop you, especially in Florida. If you have, you know, hurricane damage, which I, you know, and I don't even know whether they're writing new policies other than if you're active military and happen to be transferred to Florida. And uh, so I, I hold my breath. And all I do, what I've done is I've just cranked up my deductible on my homeowners and I have that money set aside. I have a $6,000 deductible on my homeowners. So if anything happens, I'm out $6,000 before they even get involved. I mean, I know nowadays $6,000 wouldn't cover much, maybe part of a roof, but uh, it has kept my, my premium down. And uh, because if they drop you and there's like a, like a state, homeowners insurance that's called citizens that's managed by the state of Florida. And that's kind of like where everybody ends up if no one else will take you. So it's kind of the, that's what, that's what pretty much what you have available to you. And um, again, I've been lucky. Most of the activity has been on the other coast. Doubled. Holy mackerel. Doubled. God, that's hard to take. Wow. See, now you know what went up for me? I mean, my my insurance went up, but it didn't double. But went up really high was my car insurance. Hi, Tori. And I called them and they said, what's with my car insurance? Why did that go up so high? And they said it was because of all the hurricanes on the West Coast. I'm going, okay. And they figured, I guess they could just raise everybody's car insurance to compensate for hurricane damage on the West Coast. At least that's the answer they gave me. I, you know, I know I could probably do better on my car insurance, but I'm bundled. So I don't know what that, you know, then I'd have to look around. It's just, you know, one of those bothers, you know, things that you have to have and you hope you never need. So... I'm going to fill some of my fountain pens I've been neglecting. And I have a, a newish ink. Let's see if can see. I can bring my thing down a little bit. And it's called Chocolate. A private reserve ink. I got it from uh, Noodlers. I mean, Goulet Pens. Premium quality. Rainbow of colors. High saturation. Excellent shading. So... I'm going to make a mess. I always get very jealous when I watch these guys fill these fountain pens on, on YouTube videos, and they never, ever get any ink on them. I don't know how they do it. I, I wear a lot of ink, and I was a little reluctant to do this here because I normally do it near a sink. So we'll see if I can open it. Okay, and some of these are filled. Noodler's ink is notorious to be filled to the top. 
Yeah, I don't know. What do you, I mean, oh, that's not bad because I've taken some out. This is a very pretty brown. Whether you can see it or not. Now, when someone, like, when they just double it like that, can you shop around or you just, you figure that's competitive? It, that's hard. Double. This is one of my, this is a Kowicki, Kowicki sport. And you can see it's a little tiny pen. And they come in all different colors. And, and you can buy a little, you can buy a clip for it. And I have a clip for it, but I don't have it on. And this is, you can put a cartridge in it and you can buy a converter, but I've choose, chosen to fill it with they call an eyedropper. So an eyedrop fountain pen is one that you literally, there's no cartridge, there's no converter. You eye drop, and I can fill this whole barrel with ink, and that holds a lot of ink. And um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the eyedropper and, and just fill this barrel with ink. And this pen also, I only own one, two, three gold nib pens. And this is a gold nib pen and it writes really smoothly. But I haven't had it filled in a while. So I am going to do an eye drop on it. And I'm going to use a regular, I have one here, I thought. Yeah, one of these glass eye droppers. There's nothing in here, I hope. I'll turn it upside down. I'm pretty good about when I retire a pen and I don't use it for a while, I'm pretty good about cleaning it out pretty good before I put it on the shelf. And I try to rotate through my pen collection. I've got a couple of, you know, good pens. And but most of the pens are, you know, are relatively inexpensive. But I love writing with fountain pens. And um, I journal in a fountain pen. So the only problem doing it this way, you can't really see what you're doing. Uh, oh, I can see a little ink down there. I don't know, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, okay. Good enough. I'll stick this here. Now I have a, I have a, I did have an O-ring on that. And usually you grease up that, put some silicone grease around that so it doesn't leak. So that's it. That's an eye drop filling. Now let's see what it'll write. This always makes me nervous when they don't write right away. Well, first thing I'm going to do is this. Come on. I know you haven't written in a long time. And that's the other thing. When they do this on TV, because they could have had several takes too, right? Because they just write it and it starts writing. I know I got ink in there. I know there's ink in there. Oh, well. Come on. I can hear it. There it is. Okay. There it is. Whew. Yeah, I haven't used it in. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Sophia. Safia. You're doing some great art. Yeah. I was just done filling fountain pens here for a minute. And then, but this is this is the chocolate. So it's a really nice let me see, let me get better lighting. Let me 
come down. I don't know. Let's see. It's really, a, it's a very dark, rich chocolate. It's almost, yeah. I really like it. A little focus. Focus, you freak. But that's a nice ink. And now it's writing like, like butter. Hi, Carol. How are you? This is called, let me, it's called Private Reserve Ink, and the color is chocolate. And I got it uh, on Goulet pens. And um, made in the EU, packaged in the USA. So I've never used this ink before, but I saw I saw a good review of it, and uh, it was very reasonable. I mean, so that's that. So this is my Kutaki. It's a this is a German company, uh, Kuweki. It's I know it's spelled K A W E C A. And this is a Kuweki Sport. This is their and they have a couple of other really neat pens too. So these I normally put black ink in. This is a, a pilot. And this is a gold nib, 18 karat gold. And this is probably one of my more expensive pens. And you know what? As much money as I spent for this pen, it didn't come with a converter. And what I've been refilling is a cartridge, an empty cartridge. And if I can get it out again, this one hasn't, I haven't used this one in a while either. Well, this is really there. This is, I think this is a pilot, I think. And they, they are, um, what's the word? Proprietary. Yeah. And I never bothered to buy the converter for it. So I just keep on filling the cartridge up. And, uh, and I'm using, and this, I've just been introduced to this ink from Janet Young and several other people. It's carbon ink, um, carbon black, and it is black. I mean, it's a really good black ink. I normally used uh, Noodler's Heart of Darkness. And then he's got something that's called bulletproof black ink that's to, you know waterproof and forge proof and every single other kind of proof. And this thing has like a little inner, probably can't see, but there's like a little inner thing in here that you can tip and fill so you can get the ink out of the bottom of the jar, bottle. But for for this one, I'm I'm going to use a syringe um, because I'm filling the cartridge. And this, you know, these are syringes that are meant for filling, doing this. So I'm just going to. Fill this up. And you don't want to go too far up because you got to push that into the pen. Ah, perfect. Stick that in there. And now I'll stick this in the pen. And I got ink on me. Well, it's not too bad. I normally wear a lot more ink than that. Wait until I actually do the other. And people are saying, "I that's such a pain in the ass. Why would you bother? I don't know. It is a pain in the ass. But it's part of the process, you know? It's part of the fun. 
Um, again, these, this has not been used for a while, so have to, there. This is just real black and it's like, it's just, I'm just barely just touching it and it really, it flows. So that's the Pilot Namaki. This is inlaid lack. This, this artwork here is like inlaid. This is inlaid lacquer. These flowers. And this is a you know. So this was a little expensive, and I'm pretty sure it's the Pilot. The Pilot makes your know, Namaki, Namaki, which is the process. So that's that pen. Now, so look, that's not bad for me. Yes. And I sent Carol a pen and that didn't work. And, you know, that 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 Noodler's pen that I sent Carol with the flick snip is just a pain in the butt. It's a pita pen, I guess. That's what you'd call it. Um, never writes the first time. And then it it, it this is it. And it's a noodlers. And it's a flex nib. And this thing's got ink in it. And it's got a big old cartridge. It's a plunger type of deal. I guess it does need some ink. I could maybe. But I'll tell you, I always fight with these. I always fight with these. I they're always a mess. No. Let's see, yeah, it won't write. Yeah. And it's a flex nib, meaning you push down on the nib and you get a wider and wider. And the nib, nib flays out. And it's meant to do that. It's a flex nib. And this is a pen that I've been fighting with since day one, since the day I bought it. It's been a battle. It's almost as bad as the, me and the, my jelly plate, the constant battle. I mean, yeah, look, I've got all sorts of pens. I mean, I'm embarrassed. I mean, look, here's just a few. I mean, these are just, I mean, I've got... Yeah, I got pens everywhere. I guess those are all. Uh... This is a one. This is a Lamy. A lot of um, Urban Sketchers use this pen. You know, this type of pen. I had a a Schaefer Cheap O calligraphy pen that I hadn't used in years. And I literally came across it one day and I filled it with ink. I put the, it had three nibs on it, you know, and even the narrowest one was a like a broad nib. And then they had wider ones for the calligraphy. And I figured, oh, hell, I'll get some ink and fill it. So I did. And I just started writing with it. Just started writing with it. Um, and then I started looking at buying pens. And uh, so this pen, well, wait a minute. What did I do? No, let me do this again. This is a pop off, and this is a Kuwaiti, the same brand as this one. Is it? I think Kuwaiti or. And this is a plunge pen. And you can see the nibs kind of boogered up, but I. These hold a lot of ink. And these are these are stainless steel nibs, so they're not as soft as the, the gold are very soft. All right, so. And this one is a plunger, and it's, yeah, it's, so let me do this. This is going to take a little. I got to flip this upside down. Yeah, uh. You can you can convert any pen to an eyedropper pen as long as the barrel, right, is plastic or resin and not metal or aluminum because the ink will rust it out. Hi, Candy. And obviously the barrel can't have any holes because a lot of times pens might have little holes at the end of the at the ferrule, at the uh, the tip of the pen. So it can't have any holes. It's got to be made out of plastic or resin, and you can take the cartridge out and, and fill it with an eyedropper. And that's the only requirement for, for it to be an eyedropper. 
See, this pen has a small indentation here. And there's a tiny hole here, so you couldn't, I wouldn't want to put, obviously, ink in there because it would leak out the hole. So this one, I, you can't convert into an eyedropper. So I just tip, tip this upside down to get ink in that inner basket. And so this is one that you kind of go push this down like that, stick it in here, and then slowly come up. And if you're lucky, ooh, oh, wow, I got a good fill because I have ink all over my, oh, that's me. I have ink everywhere because I forgot to wipe the rim. But that's okay. But I got a good fill. Sometimes you got to do it three times. But look at me. That's okay. But now there's a lot of ink in there. You can see it. Oh, you can see it. Maybe. So that's one of those. This is a push mechanism. And this one, this one will, this one writes immediately, immediately. And this is a broad nib. So it's a nice broad line and it just writes immediately. So that one worked out really well. And if I had, and this is a snap cap. This is what I should have done and I didn't. I should have done this before, but yeah, obviously I'll be cleaning myself up. All righty. So I got one, two, three filled. And oh, I was going to put green ink in the. Oh, well. I can put green ink in. This is um, Noodler's ink, bulletproof, and it's polar green. And usually in the old days, hi, Andrea, in the old days when you bought a big jug of this, uh, Nathan is the guy who owns Noodler's. He would throw in a, a cheap eyedropper pen. Not anymore. But Noodler's has, oh my God. And they're still a very reasonably priced. All right, this is not going to work because the next pen I'm filling is not an eyedropper. And um, yeah, I have to do the, yeah. And I won't be able to stick the pen down in there. So this is a Lamy 2000. A lot of people claim that this is like the best pen they've ever written with. And I held off for years not to buy one. And finally I succumbed and I bought one. This is uh, aluminum. And it's got, it's got some really nice texture. Again, very German, German design. And it's, 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 this is known as a, a hooded nib. And this is, this is gold. It's like white gold, platinum, I guess. That's why it's so expensive. And there's like a little window in here that you supposedly can see where the ink is, but I, yeah. And to be honest with you, this is so well machined that you can't even see where there's a line, but there is. And you're going to pull and push. And that's how you're going to fill that. But I'm going to have to tip this again to get that inner basket full. And then I got to remember to wipe the rim. Otherwise, I will be wearing more ink on my wrists. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Yes, bless your inky finger. Yes, 
inky or painty or something fingers, but not clean ones, right? Let's see. I think you pull this up. I haven't done it in a while. Uh-oh. Well, maybe that's all you do. Oh, okay. I think this may be a vacuum one. All right. And as I as I unscrew it, that's it. As I unscrew it, and then I'm going to put it in. Let's hope I know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, you know, I put it in the ink, and then when you screw down, it fills. But I could be totally wrong because I've only filled it maybe once or twice. We'll find out soon enough. Keep your fingers crossed. Yep, it worked. Look at that. Looky there. So that's how easy that one is to fill. And they claim that this pen has what's known as a sweet spot. Um, so it depends on how you hold it. If I hold it straight, but for me, it seems no matter which, well, maybe that angle is not so sweet, but they, but it's very smooth. And, uh, so that's an easy, wow, look how neat that is. And now the window is got ink, well, kind of ink in there, but that's the Lamy 2000. And it's a German, it's Lamy, and Lamy's a German company. And it's got a very, imp hardly you can hear it click. It's such a quiet click. I like a, I like a loud click. Hi, Aunt Bex. Your dresses are just gorgeous. I love them all. They are just so special. They really are. And the pockets are so pretty. I'm just making a bloody mess with filling pens. And I'm wearing more than I'm getting in the pens. Becky is making dresses for little girls around the world. And she's posting pictures of them. And I think I think the most distinguishing thing about the dresses, Becky, are your beautiful pockets. What happened to Gail? Oh, hi, Devin. Did I say hi to you? Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's, that's, that, that's, uh, no, that's, that's, what do you call it? I'm looking at the, uh, <laughs> the stream from DD this morning. I'm all right. It's on the other computer. It's on the iPad. Oh, I, I will, but I thought the storm was past us already. Oh, okay. Okay. And Becky's taking a break. This, your eighth dress? Oh, wow. Let's see. Oh, you shit. Excuse me. She's got a tornado warning or watch? It's a warning. Okay. I never can, I can never keep uh, the watch and the warning straight in my head. I, I have to look it up all the time. I should know, right? I think a warning is one has been spotted and a watch is the conditions are ripe for one to come about. I think that's the way it goes or it's the opposite of that, but. Well, I'm doing fine. I'm glad you're cooking for the fam, right? Since I've got a mess, uh, since I'm all inky anyway, I might as well fill this. This has some ink in it. So I'll empty what's in there and fill it up. I'm blowing bubbles now. Speaking of bubbles, I know. I was watching... 
Is it Barbara from Graphic 49 or 45? The Lisa Hensel's uh, crafting partner. She did, you've seen her do this. She makes a coffee mixture, right? Instant coffee. And then it's just a wee bit of alcohol in it. And then she blows bubbles and the thing bubbles and frosts up with bubbles. And then she quickly puts, like runs paper over it. So it's coffee dyed paper, but with this bubbly look. Have anybody seen her do that? Let's see. What are we doing here? Show, come on. I grew up in the Jersey. <gasps> oh, I bet. I bet. We wet, we wed. We read. There was a book club at school where I taught, obviously. And we read a really neat story. And I think it, it took, the story takes place on the Isle of Jer Guernsey, Guernsey. And it's called the, what, the Potato Peel Society. It had potato in the title. Um, and it was, it was a wonderful, and it took place during the German occupation. And um, it was a great story. It was one of the few books that we all read. We had a we had a very interesting book club at school. We never read the books. It was an excuse to get together and go out to dinner. And we, oh, you watched that movie? Okay, all righty. I forgot they had made a movie of it. Well, the book is really good. I'll have to check out the movie. See, here's another one that's a slow starter, but now it's going. All right, so here's a, and you can see this has got a pretty broad nib on it. But with a broad nib, if you're doing like urban sketching with a broad nib like this, you can obviously go this way and get a really fine, you can get, you can get a fine line and then a really broad line. And just so you're getting like two for one in terms of how the pen works. And they filmed it all on Cornwell, not on the aisle. Okay. They test your sirens so we all know why it's going. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So I got that one filled. So now I have to remember to use that. And this one, there's a, there's a term for that. I forgot what it is. Let's see. I've not read it. Supposedly it has calculations. short trip okay all righty that's it the guernsey literary and a new potato peel potato peel pie society where's bar you know chicken pot pie society uh peel okay i knew it had potato peel in the name thank you becky thank you yeah we all thoroughly enjoyed that one we really did and i'll show you this pen this was a this is a knockoff pen. There's a guy, Chris 52, that buys a whole lot of, hi, Janet, buys a lot of pens from uh, China and he reviews them. And they're usually, a lot of them are like $10. And uh, I filled this eyedropper style, but it leaks whenever I use it. I've got ink all over me. It's hard to tell now because I have so much ink on me. So I have to remember to kind of wipe it down a little bit. And uh, this pen is a really, really, this is an extra fine. It's an extra fine line. So it's very, very fine. And it's a really, it's not a, it's not smooth. It's not smooth at all. And it skips, but I think it was a $10 pen and you can hear it. Uh, 
And the other day I was using it in my journal and I looked at my hands and they were all, I mean, I look horrible now. But that's an eyedropper. All right. Enough of the pens. I've bored you enough. I'm going to go do... I went to Walmart. I told myself I was not going to go to Walmart and not get involved with this back-to-school stuff. No, no, no. I don't need any stuff. Oh. And I had to go over that way, and I had to drive right past the Walmart. So I went in. And I got stuff. I bought a... And I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with it, but I bought a package of 500 pages of construction paper all different colors and it's construction paper and I, 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 I have no idea what I'm going to do with it and well, you know what I found out at my Walmart and it just pissed me off and I I didn't think I had my phone with me but the next time I go I'll have my phone and download the Walmart because half the stuff there's no prices on half the stuff let's see um, there's no hot prices or the prices are not underneath the item and I had no idea. So underneath the paper, um, it said that this was, I don't know, five ninety two. And when I got home and I looked at the thing, it was ten ninety two. It was five hundred sheets of construction paper. And I got that and I got the the obligatory 50 cent a piece composition notebooks. How can you not buy them? I bought wooden rulers, 12 inch wooden rulers, because I think that I might make that a frame around this big gigantic piece that I am doing. Um, and they were 54 cents a piece. So I got 10 wooden rulers and, um, and I got some of these. Because I, I, I wear up the erasers on my pencils. And look, this, th this is the high polymer. This is that white, white eraser that we like to carve. So uh, we were outsiders, moved from London to live there. Oh, tiny baby, and moved back. So you lived on the Isle of Currency? Yeah, they make great rulers. And you can see, if you go online, you'll see where people have made rulers out. I mean, you know, frames out of them. Oh my God. See, I had a cart full too, Kimberly, and I had to walk almost to the other end of the store to find a che uh, a checkout person. Because I'm so afraid that if and every every aisle is, you know. You have to scan it, and I'm just so afraid that I'll screw it up. Uh, and then, yeah, but there was only it was only two things that had live people on them. Yeah, I didn't like that. I don't go to Walmart very often, and so I didn't know where everything was. Uh, but their prices, oh my God, compared to our our local so uh, supermarket chain, compared to Publix. Their prices are so, so reasonable. It's, you know, amazing. And um, and I should shop there off, more often, but I don't. I asked any humans. They said, nope. Oh, you actually asked? Oh, wow. Now, my Walmart, I have to say, is spotlessly clean, it's not, it's not like some of the other raunchier Walmarts. Mine is not. Um, it's a very nice Walmart. You can't find anybody, you know, and other than that. But, you know, it's well kept, well stocked, except that the price things drove me nuts because they were not, where, you know. But there's a Walmart app that you can just hold it up to that little thing and it'll tell you exactly uh, there's a guy that shows you where there's hidden hidden sales at Walmart if you know where to look. Uh, but been to Walmart in Canada. 
Okay. Oh, Ben went to Can Walmart in Canada and got you the got you some composition. Okay. Cool. All righty. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have. You know what they didn't have? They didn't have the half ones. I like the half ones. You know the the we bought last year. They had them. You bought them in a pack of. I think eight, they came all wrapped and there's a pack of eight of the, of the little half composition notebooks. What they did have, just hang on one second, I'll show you, um, and it's pretty cool. Uh, I got these, I guess these are for kids to put in their lockers to hold their textbooks. But I bought two of them to hold my like uppercase uh, and some uh, Somerset magazines. And they had them all different colors. And this is made in Canada. Oh, Canada, made in Canada. And you can't, you really have to lay the magazines down this way. Uh, and here's the this honker pack of construction paper, 500 sheets. So I got lots of construction paper. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. The red and green could be, you know, paper rings for the Christmas tree. I don't know what quality is. It just says it's regular weight. I don't know what regular weight construction paper is. Yeah, they're, they, they, they were $4.67. And they're very well made. I've got another one that I, I've already filled with uh, uppercase and Somerset magazines. And what I, you know, the other ones I have, uh, the magazines have to stand up this way, right this way. But then you need that much more space between your shelves. This way, you don't, you know, your shelf doesn't have to be so high in order to go in that way. So I got those, two of those. I got all of those. I got four composition notebooks. And they had these, the little mini journals. And they were 367 for three little mini journals. I don't really need them because I have all the field note journals. And here are the, the rulers I got. And they're Fisca, Fisca's, Fisca rulers. Made in China, of course. But I'm going to make a frame, glue them together and make a frame. I think I might stain them. I don't know. So that was my basically my purchases at Walmart. Um, and then I went grocery shopping. And again, the prices were just really, I mean, considerably cheaper than Publix. I'm not saying like a couple of cents. I'm saying like, a, you know, a dollar on some things cheaper than Walmart. I mean, at Publix, but Publix is very expensive. So I was walking, hi Lexi. I literally was wandering around the aisles of Walmart. I probably was there for two, three hours wandering around. Cause I don't, again, I don't, don't go there normally. I got eggs. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, I got eggs. So anyway, I filled my pins. So I'm good for a while, and I'm glad I got I got these these uh, poly poly polymer high polymer erasers instead of the the uh, red rubber ones because I don't they, they just tear off most of the paper. So I'm gonna work on. Um, I know what I'm gonna. 
put these away. I'll have to put these where my journal is. I write it. I, I journal every night and I just rotate through the pins. So I was mixing colors with uh, Cassie Arbor yesterday. I couldn't keep up. You know, she was going really fast. So, um, but I, I could go back. And um, so I'm going to work on doing another one of those. Um, what do you call them? Oh, I know what I wanted to show you. I got a couple of other things. I, I mean, oh, I know what I want to do because I want to do another one of these. Did you see this is what uh, Colleen and Kathy Berg did yesterday? Uh, they got out their washi tapes and just took a piece of, like, this is regular printing paper and just made designs with their washi paper. And I these are, so I'm going to... And then you make copies of them. And I think what I'm going to do is make copies of these, but I'm going to print some out on, t on, on tracing paper. So it'll be like tissue paper. And then you can use them as covers. And these, all of these washi tapes um, are Dina Wakely tapes. So these were all Dina Wakely designs. And so I have others that I pulled out yesterday that I ended up putting back, but I'm going to try to you know, do some, if you go on uh, CK's, CK Facebook page, you'll see where people have posted uh, theirs. I think Kimberly, didn't you post some on, or you posted yours on Twitter. I can't remember. Um, but what a great way of using up your washi tape. And if it doesn't stick, so what? You're going to make copies of it. At least I am. You can make a, you know, I can make a copy of this. Um, yeah, tissue paper. For me, I have trouble with tissue paper. It, and even though, even if I tape it to a regular piece of paper, it normally jams up in my printer. But tracing paper which is a little bit thicker than tissue paper. Uh, seems I can put that straight through without giving having to put any support on it. So. God, I, I hate these words of horror and terror. Terror. Pop up. I, Okay, so let me just clear a little area here. And, and I don't have much. And I'm going to get down my my washi tape. This is my washi tape. And I thought it would be neat to just do like all the browns. And I've got some really wide browns. So like so. And I was pulling all the browns. So that would be cool. And then that might be a little bit boring. So I might want to, here's another brown. I had them all up. And here's a, a like a pinkish brown. Put that there. And Colleen, one of Colleen or Kathy, they had a whole bunch of, they did one with lots of numbers which I think would be really cool, but I don't have, I've got a little one in numbers, but wouldn't that be cute? Just numbers. Um, I have another numbers, but I could do numbers and alphabet. What's the other number? I have another, it's a bigger number. See, I threw this all back in here yesterday when I, well, I have another number one. I'll, it'll pop up. But I have all these Oriental ones that I got in one set. And look at these. Look how pretty these are going to be. Because these are gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And I got that. 
And look at this. I'm going to do these. I'm going to do these. Look how pretty those are. Wouldn't those would be a pretty layout? And they got like a celestial kitty. And look at that. So this would make it. How many do I, So I think I'm going to do that. And then, of course, if you could do black and white would be another really neat one. So I've got some black and white could be another. Yeah, the orange wood. I could throw. I, oh, there's the other number right there. It's orange. You couldn't see it. Yeah. Yeah, I need something. You're right. I need something to break that up. But this orange is, that's just too orange. That's just like, but black and white. See, here's some part of that celestial. I got a lot of that. Holy crap, Ian. Look at all. Oh, I got green. Look at all of these. Whoops. That's at least two. Oh, and then, yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to do those for sure. I got a whole bunch of those, which I never use. Look, here's another one. Look. No, that's not one. That's not one. Look at this. Oh, look at this. It's like a kid in the china shop, right? Ooh, look at this. Ooh, look at that. Let's see, what do I see? Ah, uh, no such thing as too orange. Okay. You glued them all on? Yeah, okay. Well, these, is, these are relatively, these were relatively new, but I, I know I have some. There's another celestial one. Oh, look at this one. Oh my gosh. Looky. Holy moly. Look at that one. Look at this one. Oh. And then I have some really dull ones. I mean, and then I got the blue ones. Oh, look at this one. So I guess I'm going to, I have, a, I'm going to do a lot of these. All right, I got numbers and letters. That's definitely some to be done. Let's see if I pull out any. And I've got black and white ones. And then I've got bicycle ones. I love this. I've had these for years. I love the little bicycles. And here's some little bicycles. So I could do a black and white with the bicycles, a black and white. Got music. That's an odd one. This is really cool. I don't even know where I got that, but let's see. That's gray and black and white. That would be a nice combination. So I guess what you do is you go through and pull out ones that would kind of go like black and whites. There's another celestial one. Another one. I God, I really went crazy on that stuff, didn't I? And some of them make no sense to me. Here's a black and white. Here's a black and white. I love this one, though. I like this one a lot. All righty. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start on... And then I have a lot of, oh, look at that. I got the moons. Yeah. All right. That's, let's get going. Let's just start. We can't, I have no room for them. All right. And I got Timmy's. This is cloth. Okay, Gail. This is his cloth. Um. Uh, Washi, it's made out of cloth. Because making your own washi is a lot of fun, too. I've done that with masking tape. But I need a pop of color in this. All of these browns. Maybe a nice little green might go nice with the browns. Um, we'll see. 
Oh, look at that. That might, uh, got more of those. Anyway, all right. Stop it, Ann. Stop it. Look at this. These are eyeglasses. Aren't those adorable little glasses? All right. And this one I've had for years. I love it. It's a circuit board. Looks like a little circuit board. Okay, let me get this out of the way. Whoops. Get another piece of paper. This is just get out piece of paper, folks. I know you have washi. I know you all have washi. Even though you may not want to admit it, I know you've got some. I know you do. Okay. Now this, you got to peel. So, which is okay. And I think I'm going to go this way with it. Make a bold statement. We'll start off bold. And I'm going to cut it right there. Right where my nail is. Well, I was looking at that brown packing tape that everyone was going gaga over. You know, the packing tape, the brown stuff that you lick and put on a package and then, and then that you can stamp on right you can stamp on that and make washi and that's expensive because you have to buy so much of it i guess if i went into i haven't been to my dollar store in ages and they have some good stuff too so you got to pull Oh, no, 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 don't you dare. I don't know how sticky you are. Of course, I have it upside down. No, no, no. You know, when duct tape sticks to one, I think I'm going to do it down here instead of trying to. Easier to do it down here. Got it. There. There we go. Yeah. Don't do that. Throw that on the floor. We've got rolling tape. We've got the the old advertisement stuff with the uh, whoops. The dress thingies. Hmm. I guess I'll have to go this way. Jesus, man. Mm -hmm. I can't get it off my fingers. Really? Hmm. This really go the other way, but I'll stick this here. I bullocks that up. Uh, well, with washi tape, you should be able to pull it off. Correct? Yeah. Okay. It's kind of hard to get it. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys are thinking, what in God's name is her problem? She can't. Oh, I almost, nope, that wouldn't be upside down. I was afraid I was going to do it upside down, which you can. All right, that's good. Now I'll cut that right here. Ah, there. There. That's not as easy as it looks. Uh, 
Okay. Now, should I do one here and then two more here and then work to the middle and maybe do a, I think I'll do another one over here. And uh, I'm going to turn it around because it's much easier to work on it in front of me than across the table. Huh, it is upside down. Oh, well, it wouldn't be right if, unless it was upside down. Oh, I saw my Sandhill Crane family. And there was only one chick. So one didn't survive. There's only one. And he's getting big. They get so big eating those grubs. And I told you that the turtle eggs are gone. All there are are a bunch of eggshells out there. It's all torn up. Um, hi, Angie. Well, can you keep lying down, laying down, lying down. Um, so that whole area is all torn up, and you can see bits and pieces of broken shells. Did I say eggshells? No, turtle shells. Duh. No chickens. No chickens out there. And I don't know whether they hatched or whether something came and or they started to come up because the sandhill cranes came walking through, and one of the parent sandhill cranes was poking in that area. And I don't know whether they could have, I mean, they would have eaten them for sure if they could have gotten at the, at the turtles, at the baby turtles. They, they would definitely eat them. I mean, they eat grubs. They, they're, they're meat eaters. I mean, I saw them many years ago. I saw a sandhill crane that had a baby rabbit that it had speared, I guess, and was tossing it up in the air. And then the baby chick came up in, you know, next to the parent sandhill crane and picked it up and tossed it up in the air just the way the parent had. And it was a little tiny baby rabbit. So they'll eat, you know, it's the, you know, call of the wild, so to speak. So I don't know whether the turtles were able to hatch and make their way to the pond or something at them before they got that far. It's nasty out there, you know? It's nasty out there. You gotta be, it's not easy being a wild animal. And we got lots of ducks, of course, but they seem to be fine. And we have those Egyptian geese that are, nobody seems to like. They consider them nuisance birds. Um, well, they're not, they're not, they're not indigenous. They, they were, someone must have had them as pets and then not, you know how that goes. They move away and they leave them and then all of a sudden there's, they're all over the place. I'm having one hell of a time. All right. Let's do this. Come on in. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, it's like it's like a moving target. Well, my friends are in Ireland. They left for Ireland yesterday, so they should be there. I'm gonna be there for almost six weeks. And when they get back, I don't know. That's not very interesting, is it? Not really. Not at all. Not liking it. Boring. Boring, 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 boring. I need something to break that up. 
I do, I do, I do. I've used this. That's the... Uh, all right, let's put this down. Oh, I got this orangey one. Let me put this pinky one down and then see what else we can put down. Hi, Brenda. Angie's here in spirit, but not body because she's not feeling well. That's not good. Did I see did I see that Keisha was on last night for like I mean I went to bed about one and I saw that she was still on. And she'd already been on eight hours. Oh wow, look at that. That came right up. I guess I'm going to have to glue that down, huh? Well, fine. Be that way. I have glue. I want to start making some journals. Like journals like that. See, I don't like a lot of frilly f stuff, you know, but some people do. But I have, you know, you saw the beetle thing I did. And she's going to be, oh, my gosh. Well, when I checked this morning, it looks like they, they signed off at 2.30 this morning. So 12 hours later, right? You, she's, you're going to be on, she's going to be on 2.30 this afternoon. Yeah. I'm just amazed at all of the product that she has to sell. But last night when I tuned in, late, obviously, she was selling one at a time those little cigarette cards. That's insane. That's crazy. Crazy. Right, that's a little bit better because it's a little, but I think I'm going to slap this green in the middle because I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not the right move, but I don't know what else to stick in there. Oh, maybe a tan, a lighter burn. I... <clears throat> this has got flowers and some brown in it. That might work a little bit better. Oh, how about some of these stamps? Yeah, that would work. They could go this way. These are like, they've got browns in them, and those are stamps. And I got to, you know what? You could do this. You know what? You could do this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's a lot of fun, Brenda. It really is. I like that. Let's see. That's, that's. Because that's got the browns in it. And how about, ooh, look at these. These are faux stamps, but they've got nice hues of brown. They would look good. Yeah. I'm going to use that. That sounds like a good idea. And this is the one I just put down, right? I think. Yeah. But there's, there's a lot. you got to think about what you're doing. Oh, ha, ha, ha. that's, that's good. Let's see. I think this is the same as that. Maybe not. I got a lot of these. Jeez, I could do a whole, you know what? You know, it would be really 
fun to do on this. I know you make some great faux washi, Janet. And I like making faux postage stamps too. And, and cancel them. Um, I've got the little... But you could do this. You know what? You could do this. And... And couldn't you also do washi and postage stamps mixed together? Janet Nash, that's because you're a smart cookie. I'm sorry, biscuit. <laughs> I get that. Because that's what they call cookies, right? In England, they call them biscuits. I got to ask, because somebody in here, Yeah, this is really an ugly one. I'm going to stick this one in. It makes no sense at all. It's a coffee grinder. A typewriter and a fan. And a star. I don't know. People actually design this. So we'll stick this one in here. Huh. And they're upside down. Go figure. Okay. I'll stick this down. I was starting to ask. Somebody in here, I think, among this group. Someone. Maybe it was Becky. No, I don't think so. Ah, shit. A British show called Grant Chester. Did someone in here, was that Safi? Someone, someone recommended a series called Grant Chester. And it's on, it's part of the B, B, PBS Mystery Theater. And it has the Edward Gorey opening with his cartoons, you know, with the lady on the tomb screaming and... Um, and it's been on eight seasons. And it's the story of a young vicar. Well, he's not that young because he's been in the war. And okay, okay, Angie, keep resting. Take care of yourself. Take care. And he's been in the war because he's got flashbacks. And I think it was World War II because the, the flashbacks look like World War II. And he was part of the Scotch Guard. And he's, he's hooked up with this, you know, very predictable, crotchety old detective who's married and has a a shitload of kids, and they solve murder mysteries. Does that sound familiar to anybody in here? Anybody? No, no. Someone had to have recommended it to me. Fess up. Somebody fess up. Because I'm loving it. Even though it's very predictable, there's something about it that is very endearing, and I'm really enjoying. I've got some houses. Houses. I think this is what that is. Houses. It's hard to tell. You know, when you buy, look, oh, my God, I got tons of that. I didn't mention the show in any lives, Okay. You, I think I've seen a couple. Okay, now it's on, I'm watching it on Prime, even though originally it was a masterpiece, mystery theater, not masterpiece, but mystery theater on PBS. And you can watch episodes one through five or six for free on Prime. And then they, then they want to charge you. So I don't know whether 
You could go over to PBS and join them and pay them, you know, and pay their fee and then finish watching it and then have access to the rest of PBS, like Mystery Theater and Masterpiece Theater, which is all obviously excellent programming. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's give this some thought in. Let's stick this over here so we have some. But it's, it's pretty good. Yep, that's it. Grandchester, you got it. I don't recognize any of the actors. Uh, they're all Brit, British. I think. You know, I love, there's something about British casting. When they cast characters, they the actors in or that are in those roles are so authentic. You know, they're there and, you know, and they're not all glamorous looking, you know, uh, they're just, it just seems to me that the casting in most British shows, the, the, the people that they cast for those roles are just so real. And, and that's got to do with who's ever casting the, you know, the people for those shows. And it just, I don't know, that's my observation. I like getting into a good series. And I'm a, I am love binge watching. I do. Which means for a late night. Because I started watching this about, uh, about 8.30. I forced myself to stop at 1.00. You love U.S. movies? Yeah. I want to see Oppenheimer. Lori! Hi, Lori. Yes. Isn't Sydney drop dead, drop dead gorgeous? I'm thinking maybe it's my, my teacher friend that I had co coffee with. Because she mentioned something else called a, a very British scandal, which was the name of another series. Maybe it was... Maybe it was my friend Sharon who mentioned it. But Sydney is gorgeous. What a hunk of hunk of, hunk of man he is. He's the main character, Sydney. And what's the name of the, uh, oh my gosh, I can't think of his name. The vicar in tra training that's come to, to train under Sydney. Poor guy. They call him a pansy because he's homosexual. I guess that was the term for homosexuals back in the day. But he's he's become a very endearing character. That's what I was saying. Yeah, their casting is so much. Yeah. Doc Martin, yeah, you know what? I have to go back and start watching that again because I love that show, and I know I didn't see it all. Okay, Janet. Hopefully I'll be here. I'm not planning on going anywhere, just hanging out, doing nothing. Well, that's not true. That was stupid. You cut that off because of a little over, and now you went too far. Now you're going to have to put it back. So there. Oh, well. I think that's a little. Like uh, Orange is the New Black. Oh, man, I binge watched that. And, of course, a lot of the. A lot of the uh, shows now, they, they do that. You know, they release the whole. They release all of it at once so those who want to binge watch can binge watch i think they did that with the orange is the new black but you know i got bored with that i don't think i ended up i don't think i saw the end of that i just kind of i don't even remember now 
Oh, come on, Ian. What the heck are you doing? This is like ridiculousness. Oh. Ah. All right. Was that worth it? I don't think so. I don't think it was worth it. I think from now on, I'm just going to leave it overlapping. There. Don't look. Don't look there. Just don't look there. Um. Okay, that, 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 that. Now, what we need in the middle. Look at that. Oh, it's going to fit. Perfect. The stamps. I have a stamp book. That you can put stamps in if you like, put like, like your coat. Like. Look at you. Hi, Barbara. She just got back from the Combo Cat Cafe and Thrift Shop, got eight rubber wooden back stamps for a dollar, less 25% off. It's 25% Wednesday. Well, that is a great deal. Good for you. Good shopping. Yeah, you know, we have we've got, you know, a couple of goodwills and there is a thrift store next to a goodwill down the road a ways that basically they sell their stuff basically uh supports an animal shelter so but they don't have any neat stuff in there i mean it's fancy stuff not not not, not nothing junky uh I mean, I sometimes if I need a bigger frame for something, I'll go and buy a, you know, a, a picture, obviously, for the frame. But most times I, I really splurge and spend a whole whopping dollar at the Dollar Tree and buy a dollar, dollar Tree frames. But it, I was last time I was there, they had a very interesting painting and I liked it. I mean, I like the painting itself. It was an Egyptian kind of style picture, like Pharaoh kind of ish type of picture. And, and they only wanted $5 for it. And the frame was gorgeous. Well, I'm not going to try to get that off. I'm just going to glue. And can you believe that? How lucky am I? That's just, look at that. And that was the end of it, and it fits perfectly. Oh, my gosh. Let's see. You're going to come visit. Got two little house on the prairie. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have, I should make a trip to Goodwill because I have a whole bunch of clothes that I can get rid of. They're clothes that I wore when I worked, which I don't need and I don't fit into anymore. So they should be going to Goodwill. So I could usually, I can drop off and, but that Goodwill is, they're mostly Oh, you see, you needed that little piece. Stupid. Um, it's mostly clothing. It's not like Becky's with the bins. It used to be that they would have, like, craft stuff. But not anymore. I have another thing of stamps that's not opened. Maybe I can get 
something there. Nettie. I think Nettie bought this for me because it says Nettie gift to Ann Lar. So thank you, Nettie. Thank you. I would imagine this was, I don't know. Because Nettie's not on Keisha's. It must have been Maddie's. I don't need anything to buy. After all, I've got a pack of 500 sheets of construction paper. I wonder if that would go through the printer. It'd be kind of cool if you could print on it, don't you think? Or if you could do like a, a, a transfer onto the construction paper. <laughs> yeah, I've got enough of my own stuff. I don't need to. Yeah. Well, we can chop our own stash, but wouldn't it be cool if we could go to each other's homes and, 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 and go shopping in each other's craft rooms or stash room? Or wouldn't that be what a trip that would be, right? I wonder if you could do that. I mean, if, say say I went live, right, and I just walk through my stuff and someone could be there and you could say, well, uh, oh, can I have that? And I go, yes, you can have that. And then you could just kind of do a virtual uh, shopping spree through our stash. Let's see. I love lemon. I buy large of lemons. And I throw, I mean, place them in the freezer. Oh, that works? You just freeze them with the, the, the skin on and all, and they just take it out, and you can use it? I, yeah, I would see juicing them and freezing the juice, but I guess you, I mean, I, I freeze bananas whole. I mean, you can't really eat them, but they're great for smoothies and banana bread. It can be there in eight hours. Okay. All right. The store will be open. So I wonder, that would be kind of a neat thing to do, right? And I, you know, I could say everything, anything you see is up for grabs. No, I'm seriously thinking of putting, you know, grab bags together and selling them for n next to nothing. And I would, and I would even pay the postage just to get rid of it, knowing that it was in good hands. Five hours later, she finally gets the thing opened. Throw that on the floor. That's for you, Lily. You can play with that. Aren't you thrilled? Keep going. I don't think so. And let's see. Feely, 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 feely. Hmm? I don't know. Maybe you just break into this. Because every one feels like it's the one because of the little ridges. No, 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 no. Huh. Well, I know what I'll do. I'll fix that. Okay, you see, not at all when graded while frozen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, something calls for lemon rind or grated lemon. I'm glad Angie's not here. She'd have a fit. I'll just cut right there. Oh, I, I came up with a way of taking, you know, that, that those transparent sticker backings off. You know what a pain they are to separate. And I came up with a very, very unsafe uh, way of separating the. Uh... I'll show it to you. But I would not recommend it. But you just have to be careful. 
But you know what I did the other day? Speaking of not being careful. You know those plastic air pillows now that they pack everything in? And you got to stab them, right, and to take the air out. So I had them all lined up in the kitchen, and I was popping them, and I managed to stab myself in my finger with the knife. I drew blood. They are annoying, those, those air pillows. But I really don't know what the alternative is, you know. I just glue one down over that. I don't know. I just, I'll just put part of one there. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll cut that right there. Do you know? You know? I just cut the ends off, and use them as bags. Oh my gosh! Wow. Those are so tiny, but I guess you had, if you had little stuff, like little bits and pieces of stuff, you could, and then it's clear so you can see what's in them. That's a help, you know, it's not like a, huh, it's very interesting, very interesting. I mean, I like the, there's that paper that's all, has those ruffle, ruffle ridges on it. Those are kind of neat. That's not the top to this, Ian. No, it's not. Could be, but it's not. This is the top. Way to recycle, yeah. Let's see. Well, I did notice someone in the store with her little pink tonguey hanging out. Okay. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. There. Well, not crazy about that one, but the next one will be better. Um, but you know what would be, you know what you could do to this? I know what I'm going to do to this. I'm going to splatter some white splatters or white or gold. Right? Splattering will make this, it'll bring it to life. It, that's what it needs. It needs a splatter. I don't know where the gold would show up. White would. But you know what I'm thinking? I know this is crazy. I'm thinking red. I don't know why I'm thinking red. But that's what I'm going to do. This definitely needs some splattering. Does anybody else agree with me? Some splattering? Or not. Gold? What do you think? Should we go? Are you game? Or it's either splatters or circles. Now, I know it's supposed to be pure washi, but I don't like this. It needs something. And I use that. Oh. Um, that's a good... But we'll find out. That's a good that's a good question. Both. Both. Circles and gold. Well, I know white gesso. Circles. Let's try it. Hey. What's the worst case scenario? I wipe it off. And it smears. So now you so you have a gold smear. Nothing wrong with a gold smear, right? But before I do that, let me show you the dangerous way of separating these suckers. Oh, actually, I tried to separate this one, and it didn't. You know, these. These things that are so hard to separate. You know, you sit there for an hour going like this. And I've tried I've tried the tape. Are you guys catching up on the lemon talk? It's interesting. They're freezing lemons and then... And throwing them whole into their freezer. Yep. You know, you try to separate them like so. Well, now I am. Let's see if I can do this. Bring you down. Whoa. All right. Get this out of the way. I'll turn this over like so. 
So I've been doing, I shouldn't do that on this because with my luck, I'll put a hole right through it. I take my X-Acto blade and I kind of get right in here and kind of get the thing right in there like so and look. Ta-da! Oh, did you see that? You probably didn't see it. I'll do it again. Okay, you're taking an X-Acto blade. Sherman camera. And you get right at the tip, right? And you have your finger pretty close. And what I'm doing is... I'm pushing down the tip into the into the plastic to get a little bit of a grip and then just kind of go like so and then that just picks it right up. Um, so that's how you can separate these really easily. There's one. Let's see, I have another one over here. I can show you that that was not a fluke. Yeah. Here's a little one. See? Take the little one. Again, you want to get really close. Kind of stick this in a little bit and just flick it real like so. Come on. There, I got it. I had it. Come on. Ah. It popped up there. There it is. You got to grab it real fast before it gets away from you. There. Ta-da. <laughs> yeah, you just got to be careful. But I think the trick is making sure you put the tip, get the tip into the, and kind of like you're basically scraping it up like a movement like that. And then you can get a grab, get a grip of it. Or on, get a grip on other things. So that's how you do that. But you got to be careful. But we know we have to be careful around sharp tools, you know, and no running with scissors, correct? So what we're gonna we're gonna try some gold splatters. All right, here we go. This is the stuff I used on my um, Mike Mikey prompty thing. You know, and that 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 uh, prompt list that I did that Mike created, I a attacked that in a totally different manner than I've ever done a prompt thing like that before. Um, I've never, I've never done. And what I did was not, you know, the prompts we had. It wasn't like we're. It's not like doing a spontaneous prompt where you pull a card and that's the prompt. You know, you, you have the prompt list, so you have it, and you can study it and look at it. And for the very, I mean, maybe you do this all the time, and I've never done it before, but I looked at all of the prompts, looked at the words on the side, which are supposed to be there for inspiration or direction or something that you can do. And for me, I literally had in my mind a story. And I built a story based on those prompts. And I've never done that before. When I saw a build and, and food packaging, I thought, well, I'll build a city out of card, out of boxes from food packaging. And then, you know, balancing, I, for somehow I, I thought of the, the tight rope came to mind and then double, then the twins on the tight rope. And then, you know, using texture, and I knew I had that little uh, stencil, but I kind of built, you know, I'm, I don't know. It, it wasn't as haphazard as most of them have been in the past for me. I ac actually had built a story based on what was there, if that makes any sense at all. It doesn't even make sense to me now that I'm saying, now that I'm verbalizing and I'm going, what the hell is she talking about? But anyway, I just like the way it came out. Okay. 
So I'm thinking we want to do a lighter color. Now this is like a white, whitish, but I'm thinking maybe like this here, not this, because this is too brown. I don't want this copper one. This one looks good. And maybe this one. So, um, I guess I'll go for this one. I should get the, uh, what do you call it? The, the fan brush. The official, is that what they call these, a fan brush? Well, my pleasure and honor, Andrea. Wow. Oh, what's her suggestion, Lexi? Not, let me see. Oh, what am I missing here? Something needs to go. Something's going into the society of Lexi. Better start poking around with a knife, Barb. Works every time. Now to find my craft knife. Uh huh. I I wonder if you could do it with the. I don't think you could do it with the pen, because the pen wouldn't be. You know, pointy enough. You could probably do it with a fountain pen, but it would ruin the nib on the fountain pen. I don't know. I I I I I, I hear your concerns. Um. It may not stick to the washi, but if I dry it, but then if you put the heat gun on the washi, what's that going to do to the, yeah, we have all sorts of issues here that could, that could appear. And we will solve, we will answer those questions momentarily. Let me get this into a really goopy, thick, delicious, golden mush. This is Karataki Gambi Tambo watercolor. I want, they have a Nouveau art set of Nouveau art colors, but they're sold out everywhere. I want that set really. Oh, see now, look how nice and thick and gooey that is. All right, here we go. Step back. I got it all over me. God, it's going everywhere except on the paper. It's all over my hands. I can never do it that way. I have to do this way. Hmm? Come on. All right. Let's see. You can barely see it. Actually, you can't see it at all. No. All right. I'm going to try. But look, it's like I, you can see it on me. All right. I'm going to try the white. No, I got golden. I got it in every single tray. We'll try the, the white. You just got to get it thickish. And I don't know whether this is the right brush to use. Maybe I should just use the big regular, you know, brush instead of this little fan brush. All right. See, nothing's coming off this. Nah. Let's get some. Let's get a, let's get a real brush here. That thing's too wussy. Let's get this big old, big old, big old. Mm. 
Nope. Can't see it. You cannot see it. So. I know I'm going to try. Oh, that was a good splatter. That looks like milk. Yeah, I can see it there. See it there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fling, fling. Step back. Step back. Everyone move back. Yeah. I just want to make sure I didn't get all over my computer screen. See, I got some... All right, that's... I don't know whether you can see it or not. Doesn't that look like milk? Milky-ish? All right. That's not bad. All right, I'm happy with that. That really... Give it a good fling. Okay. That's it. And I don't think I dare. Well, I will. I'm going to put the heat gun on it just for the giggles. And you can't see what the. You can't see the chat. Are we still there? Hi, Kathy Berg. You have inspired me to play with my washi tapes, you and Colleen. It is a great play. It is very fun to play with. And I this one was, was so boring and I didn't like it, so I thought I would try splatters. And I'm using these uh, metallics, and they're not really the best, best, best. And... Um, so, not thrilled with this one. And I thought that would help. And maybe some circles to do something to it. Uh, so, I might do something to f fix that. No. This is the one I made this one earlier. I made this one yesterday after you guys were done. And this is all Dina... Is it Dina Waverly, Waverly, Ring, Dina Waverly, right? And this is all Dina Waverly washi that I had in my stash that I think I got from Painty Girl Lori. I think I bought from Painty Girl Lori in a in a sale somewhere. But these are all hers, and this is just all brown, and I don't like it. Dina Wakely, yes, that those are all Dina Wakely. Uh, Hi, Allie. Just playing with washi tape. Let me just see. I don't know what this is going to do to the uh, the washi tape. If I go way up here. Oh, before I did this, I I filled a bunch of fountain pens. And everyone, that's why I have ink all over me because I'm not. I'm a messy fountain pen filler. All right. I think we're just going to leave that alone. Let it dry on its own. And try another one. Let's see. Oh, see. Oh, that's kind of, can you see? Oh, that, that's coming out. Oh, see that? Hi, Janet. Welcome back. Look how nice that came out right here. That's when I f did the fling instead of the tap, tap, tap. That was a flung, flung, flung paint. But I like that. That right there. And that. And I like that. I like the flingy stuff better than the dots. 
you know, that came out. And that's that's most that's silver, I guess, silver metallic. And you can barely see the gold. I like that. And it did stick. I mean, it's it's stuck. It's not going anywhere. We were afraid it wouldn't stick to the washi. I might, when I'm said and done, I might turn this around and then, you know, do some flingage this way on the top here. But, yeah. Okay, all righty. That one looks good. I'm going to do one more. And I suggest you guys get your, your washi out and have a play. You know, I was thinking also, um, I did. I did splash paint because it, it, it just needed something. It still really needs a lot of something, but I did. Uh, but these are the Kurtaki Gamby Tambo watercolor sets. And I, they have a Nouveau art set that is just luscious, but it's sold out everywhere. So everyone has decided that it's also luscious. And that palette, that color palette is, oh, my God, is that me? I love that palette. I didn't even know I loved it. Now I do. I have to say I love that palette. Um, I had another piece of paper out. What the hell did I do with it? It's not that I don't have any paper. I have 500 sheets of construction paper. I could do it on construction paper. No. I have typing paper. I have a little tote over here that says... All sizes and types of paper. And everything is crammed in there, including tracing paper. I like doing the tracing paper. Well, at least on my computer, I can stick the tracing paper. Isn't it? Yeah. It, it's a gorgeous palette, isn't it, Kathy? Oh, my gosh. Those are, oh. And it's, I guess there's, what, 24 colors, I think, in the palette. And it's hard when you go, when I went to their website, um, Amazon doesn't have it. Uh, Dick Blick doesn't have it, but has it, but says it's sold out. Um, yeah. I just love the, the, the subdued kind of colors. All right, I've got, you saw me, I'm going to start doing some of this. Uh, I've got th this whole set of celestial washi. So I think I'm going to do the celestial as in the universe, because I bought a whole set of this, and we'll throw in a celestial kitty. You have it on back order. Ooh, that's probably a good idea. I just didn't. And, well, it's, is that the kind of thing that they'll notify you when it's in? Or they'll they just notify you and they'll ship it to you when it's in? I'll have to go check. I don't think I've ever bought anything from Dick Blick. I used to get their catalog, though. When I was teaching, I pretended that I was like an art teacher and asked for their catalog. They've got an amazing catalog. They really do. That's a good idea. And just wait, right? Eventually they'll have it. Look at this. Is this not gorgeous? The gold and the silver and the stars. And I don't know whether that's part of it or not. No, I don't think that. Oh, here's some more of that celestial over here. That must have been quite the set that I bought. So we're going to start with that. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, J Kathy. I will do that. I will do that. Because I love those watercolors. Because they're 
they're just they're a different animal altogether i have the big 36 set and then i bought those all those the, the new ones metallic ones recently when i was looking for the art and roll. So i'm going to start out with this did you guys have trouble? I have trouble getting it down straight. And that's why I start at the bottom because it's closer to me. Okay. Ugh. Now, I think I'm going to go, for this one, I think I'm going to go around and then kind of move in like so. Because I didn't like the design that I had. Because you obviously can. Ooh, ooh, has anybody done diagonal? Maybe I'll do diagonal on the next. Oh, wouldn't that be cool, diagonal? I have one that I did with strips. Yeah. I had a hell of a time with this one. <laughs> this was just I don't know. Um, I did something like that with strips of magazines. Yeah, I might. But then added splatters and circles to it. So it really wasn't in the true... And I did that a couple of years ago. And then I made a, I, I made like a frame for it, like a cardboard frame for it. I was telling everybody that I, I succumbed and went to Walmart and bought some back to school supplies. I didn't see those neat Sharpies that, that Colleen found. Um, but I got, little notebooks and i got the composition notebooks and i got a thing to hold like magazines or textbooks in and the you know obviously you got to buy some 50 cent composition notebooks i don't know what i'm gonna do with them but make covers right didn't you? You made a cover. You put one of these. You made a cover on one of these for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's funny. I don't know why. At least me. I never think to use it. I never think to use it. Unless a prompt says something. Like, unless a prompt says, use washi tape. Um, I have put some washi tape, uh, oh well, I have used some washi tape on like a, in a journal page, you know, just like a little piece somewhere. Oh, okay. All right. That's why you did one of the, you did one of these whole, you did, you did this on a whole big whole sheet of Sticker paper. I could do that, too. I have sticker paper. That would be cool. And then you could just cut it, cut it out. Now, that's a thought. Never thought of that. That's so you... Yeah, that's a good idea. I have some... I have some sticker paper. Now... If I were to, I don't know much about scanning and such, but if I scan these, does that not make them digital? And can't they be, can't they be posted to like, you know, Colleen's website as a digital download for people to print out? I don't know. I, I don't know that I need any special, I mean, I can scan, 
That's what I'm. And is, and is that is that how is it that simple to do, or is it more complicated than that? I guess that's what I'm asking you. I know that you were talking about taking pictures of them and posting the pictures so people could copy. Oh, okay. All righty. I mean, I don't have like a scanner. I have a, I have a scanning feature on my printer. It's not a dedicated scanner. I like this. But that would make a nice frame. I mean, if you could, I mean, if you were framing something. Now, let's see. I think this is going to go next. Mm hmm. Because this is a little wider. Yeah, it is a pretty washi tape. I don't think I've ever used them before. I, I can pretty much say I'm 99% sure that I bought them, obviously, but never used them. But now's the day. Now's the time. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty. That is pretty. Hmm. I'm going to go this way. this huh that's it haha <laughs> I'm using my knife <clears throat> yeah I get a little white there do I want I'm going to be anal. Yeah, I'm going to be anal. I'm so glad that they fixed the air conditioning out on the porch. That was a... The guy was so nice once he figured out what he was here to do. That was a little scary. Able air was acting like they weren't able, but they finally they got their act together. Oh wow! Now I think. Let's see. You want to do this, then that, maybe the kitties in the, in the, in the, in the middle. I don't think I'm going to get those all on there. Hmm. I like this. Let's do this. Yeah, she's being a good girl. She's out on the porch. Yeah, I'm worried about her. I don't think she's right. I think, yeah, I don't know.
I mean, her arthritis is... It's pretty, I mean, but you know, when she's laying down and then she gets up, of course she's going to limp. She's stiff. And then she does this big, big stretch. So you don't want to be walking behind her because she'll stop and she'll stretch, big stretch. Her back legs will she'll do a big, big stretch, like to get the kinks out. She's nine years old. So that's really not that old for an inside cat, you know, who's lived the life of luxury. But I think I've told you the story before when I went to the vet several years ago and they determined that it's not like she had something stuck in her pore, that she had arthritis. And he gave me that arthritis medicine, you know, that you give pets. And then his other suggestion was, well, I could carpet my house. I'm thinking, oh, that's real practical. I have no carpet in my house at all. It's all tile. Or I could, you know, keep her from jumping. I mean, these are, sometimes I wonder where these vets come up with this. You know, they, they prescribe medicine that you have to wonder how you're going to get it in there without you wearing half of it. But anyway, I can't prevent her from jumping. And I, I'm not going to carpet my house. That's just not a possibility. I never thought that I would enjoy living without carpet. This is the first time I've ever lived in a home without carpet. Of course, I'm in Florida, which helps. But I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, she can puke anywhere she wants. I know this is a horrible, not a nice thing, but she can. And I, you know, it's easy to clean up. What do you think? Ooh, this is getting. See, it's warm here with Yundex. It feels like a hundred. Oh boy. Remind me when I'm whining. I know, I know. Your weather is so. That's such a. I can scan things as well. On my printer has a scanner. I, but I think when I'm, I guess my question is when you scan it. Does that or what does that make it digital? That's what I don't know. Yeah, this is coming out. I would say excellent day. And I I like these polka dots so much. They gotta go here. They have to go in here. Yes. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, she says yes. Okay. All right. Let's see, I have the Epson Echo Eco Tank printer, and then I have a color laser printer. And the color laser printer does nothing but print; has no other function other than print. And I didn't know that when I bought it. I thought it was going to do everything, and I should have known better because it was ridiculously inexpensive. Um, but the way I get around it, whoops, I take a picture of something, right, with my camera, upload it into Google Drive, and then I print it off Google Drive, and I, then I send it. I send it to the brother printer, and it prints that way. So that works. Oh, I like the polka dots. Ooh. Yep. Oh, no. Yeah. I keep the house at 78. Um, and the porch at 78. And, and and before it was fixed, it was running all the time, and it could, couldn't get the porch down. Get the porch down to like eighty two. Now the porch is not. It's not meant to be a year round room. It's not, and I'm trying to make it one. 
and uh, it's acrylic windows, you know, acrylic sliding windows. It's not insulated. And I know I'm, you know, it's not very ecologically the right thing to be doing. But I just love having that room as a year-round room. And the only way you could do that is if you had, you have air out there. Oh, look what's happening. I'm pulling too hard, though. That's what my, I'm doing. That's my bed. I'll stick that over here. Where's that over here? When I first moved in here, I looked into making that into a year-round room. Because it was a, there was a, a like an aluminum sided, you know, screen porch out there that was old and rusty and it was in really bad shape. So I had a contract to come out to see what it would cost to make that into a year round room, which I mean is building real walls and putting real windows in, you know, and making it. A, and he was going to raise the floor. The floor is dropped by maybe three inches. It's a drop on a concrete slab. And he would raise up the floor and permits would have been involved in. Yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. So he came back with an estimate. You know, hindsight is always great, right? Looking back now, I've been in this house seven years, and the estimate he gave me was $20,000. And I kind of bolted that. Oh, no. I thought I got, well, I'll save that. Shoot. Well, maybe I can, wait a minute, maybe I can piece this together. So I said, okay, well, what would it cost just to put another porch out there that's like out there, but better quality? So that estimate was 9000 And then I paid another $800 to have a another air conditioning duct run off the main air conditioning unit to go out there. So there was some air going out there. And then I got some really beautiful porcelain tile that looks like wood flooring put out there, right? It looks like wood, but it's porcelain. And that was another $3,000. So, and then I put the mini split in, which was another 3000 So now what I'm up to, 12, I'm up to 15000 Hindsight, right? I probably should have spent the twenty seven seven years ago. I can't imagine what it would cost to do that today. Can't imagine. Uh, this is not working, so I'm going to cut it here. Wait a minute, maybe. No, I'll just cut it here and then piece it in. Nobody will know. Don't tell. I'll stick a piece on top of that. That's hindsight, right? My guess would be, I don't know, at least 30000 I don't know. It's one way of finding out. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny you say that because it really isn't. It's really not. Because that stuff that I put out there, I mean, nothing's... broken it was that you know again that was just a, man there's there's heavy i mean double plane heavy heavy glass sliding doors that closes that room off completely and in the past i would just close that down for the summer um but i just the house it just makes the house it gives me i'm, I'm out there all the time i i live out in that room um I mean, I'm in the living room where all this stuff is, but I'm, I mean, I have dinner out there. Um, that's where the pond is. I mean, that's so. 
And my problem, you know, with that room is if I and if I redid it right and made it into like a part of the house. It would be secure. The way it is now, hurricanes are a problem. Um, because those windows, basically, they say to take those windows out if the winds are over 75 miles an hour. And I've done that. I have moved. There's nothing out there that gets wet. I could, you know, but I have moved all the furniture and opened the window so literally the hurricane can blow through and not blow out a window. I've done that in the past. Um, and that's, and I contacted somebody to see if there was any way that there could be hurricane shutters put out there. And uh, just the way that porch is, there's no nothing that they could hook onto that shutters could be hooked onto. Now, if it was a real structure, then hurricane shutters could be put on real windows. But there's not. The guy came out and he said there's nothing structurally that, you know. And the last time we had a hurricane, you know, I said the hell with it. I didn't take the windows out. I didn't open them, and I say, what's the worst case scenario? They blow out. And it's not going to be blowing glass all over the place. It's going to be acrylic. And if more than, if anything, they'll crack. And uh, so, but we had one hurricane. And I had the glass sliding doors closed, obviously. And the glass sliding doors were moving. That's how, but I had the, I had the, uh, I had taken the windows out of the porch and I'm sitting here in the living room watching the glass sliding doors bow. And I'm thinking, that's not real smart, and You should probably, you know, maybe leave that room and not be there watching this bow. But the last year when the when hurricane came through, I said, screw it. I'll just kind of take my chances. And I think it's highly unlikely that we would ever get sustained winds of 75 miles an hour. I'm not saying we probably have gotten gusts over 75 miles an hour, but sustained. I'm about 15 miles inland, so I'm not right on the ocean. Because they, they want us always to evacuate. The, the people that own this community, they always encourage us old people to evacuate. I'm not evacuating with a cat. Are you kidding me? I'm not going anywhere. Bye, Barbara. Thanks for stopping by. And congratulations on your haul. Can you see me lugging Lily around? I could barely carry her in one of those carriers and going to a shelter where they take pat pets. Oh my God, no. Now the pond did come up one year to within four feet of the porch. And I had a lake. I had a beautiful lake for a while. And there was, it was, it was actually white caps out on the pond. It was kind of cool. And we had no school because the school was underwater. We had about five hurricane days. And a lot of the people were without electricity. But I only lost my electricity for a couple of hours because when they built this place, they built all the utilities underground. So we very rarely, if ever, lose our electricity. And if we do, usually it's, oh, this is getting good. I think I'll, I'm going to sign off when I finish this. But can you see how gorgeous this is? Ooh. 
storm sound. We did it mainly. Oh, okay. All righty. That's interesting. Okay. So that was just a barrier to prevent more water coming in. That makes sense. All right. I'm going to get this in. And then I think in the center will go the kitties. Excuse me. And that'll be it. That'll be so cool. What do you think that's? No, I think I'm, I'm going to finish this off. I'm not going to put something totally different in the middle. I mean, I'm tempted to like stick this in the middle. Or... No, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stay with the celestial rule. Okay, so you had a like a little cottage on the water. Now you were on the Atlantic Ocean, correct? You're on the Are you up you're out by the Outer Banks, right? And that's where you have the horses. Kimberly, I think. You're know, being on the water with flooding and such is so stressful. I think I'm going to go in. Oh, okay. The kitties will. That's what I thought. Now, you, st you still see the horses, though. So you're still in that area, you think? That's so cool. The wild ponies. Well, how are your parents over on the West Coast? They had one hurricane. Well, they had one really, what, last year? Didn't they have one bad one that came through there? But they were okay, right, I think? They're near Naples, right? That's what I thought. Yeah, I've been to Naples once. Hi, Janice. Just playing with washi tape, inspired by Colleen and Kathy Berg's stream yesterday. And I happen to have all this celestial washi tape. I mean, a lot of it, apparently. Fort Myers, okay. And they love it? Good. Yeah, that's a nice area. Well, my best, my best friends are moving to the West Coast. They're moving to Bradenton. And my heart is broken. But, so I'll be driving over to Bradenton. Not to see them as frequently as I see them now, but. I see, I've. And my one said said well, my one said son said well do you, would you consider moving to Bradenton and I said no I can't follow them around what happens if they get to Bradenton and they decide to move again I can't follow them around oh I guess not that's not a good idea I said no <clears throat> well they're in Ireland for five weeks six weeks. And uh, initially, they said they were thinking of, I think I told you this on this stream, initially, they really were considering moving to Portugal. Well, Bradenton's a hell of a lot closer than Portugal is. They were in Portugal. I could maybe see them once a year, but 
Bradenton is a three hour car drive. So I think I can manage that. And the kitties are going in the middle. Celestial kitties. Right down, right here, right here. If I can find where it, is that it? Is that it? I can't tell. Yep, that is it. Well, this is so much fun. And you know what? It's very relaxing. So if you're looking for something mindless to do, and you have a lot of washi that you don't know what to do, this is the answer. Something relaxing, something that's going to use up something that you don't normally use, at least not in this quantity. This is the answer to all your problems. Washi tape your problems away. Ooh. And look at that. Ooh. Wow. Is that not fun? Hi, Jilly. It just feels so good. You know, it's like, is that not gorgeous? I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I wonder how that's going to print. That's probably going to drive the printer crazy. But man, does that look cool? Or what? Or what? What? Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can't use my the zoom in feature on my camera. I know there's got to be some way to do this by touching keys on the camera, but I don't know how to do that. Let's see. How's that? That's not too bad. It's kind of in focus. Yep. This isn't driving it too crazy, is it? Wow. So that was all. That must have been, obviously, that must have been one set of washi tapes that I bought that were all celestial. And I think I used them all. Mm-hmm. I think I should go out a little bit. Huh, that works. You can see my Alice in Wonderland. All right. Well, I think I'm going to say so long. Gosh, I've been on for almost two and a half hours. Probably bored with me. You probably have things to do. Uh, I'm probably going to do one more. Well, you know what? I'm going to do one more if you want to hang around and hang around. If not, that's okay. doesn't cost anything. I, my, 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 uh, my hours just rolled over on... Um, Stream yard, so I have a fresh 20. So let's see. Uh, so, bye. If those of you are leaving, not bored at all. Okay. Well, I have one more set of washies that I want to try. That was another that were that were not celestial that are gorgeous also and they are i guess asian or orient oriental 
Oriental. Okay, Julie. And these are these are gorgeous also. Look at these. You can't see them there. These are really pretty. But I'm going to use these. And I got, they're all wide. And here's a couple of narrow ones. And then here are some much lighter ones that must be part of that set. And uh, yeah, look. So I'm going to start with these and see. I think I'll start with this. It'd be nice if I stayed in frame, right? I'm always out of frame. I, I apologize for that. And you guys are so, it's too bad that someone can't give me a, an electrical shock or something and say, you're out of frame. But let's see. I've got that, right? And you know what I'm going to do? Since I filled all these pens, I'm going to draw a line. Stay in the lines. There. There. Okay, Janet. I understand it's time for evening chores and getting ready for bed and Grant Chester and Keisha just went live. So if you want to go spend some money, that's the place to be. Yep, I should do that. I do have painter's tape. I'm going to start here because it's easier. Again, I have trouble with the wider tape, so I'm going to start at the bottom, even though I'm going to have it upside down, but it'll be right side up when I turn it around. There. Oh, this is pretty. Pretty. And I have no idea where I got this. I have no idea when I got it. But I guess it. And let's see how fast I can do this. I don't know. This is pretty. So it's got green, black, and blue with these oriental scenes with the cranes. And I know the cranes have a lot of significance in oriental law and customs. Oh my gosh, I saw. Uh, you know what? I'm going to show it to you. I, I'll call it a rabbit hole. I got the latest encyclopedia book from Uppercase. They call them encyclopedias. Um, and there are specific topics. And I've got one on art supply that's gorgeous. And the latest one is called Rag and Pulp. And it's all about what people do with paper. And there's this artist that does origami, but it's not the origami that you and I are familiar with. And um, this is the, it's called Rag and Pulp. Pulp. And it's put out by Upper Case, which is a publication from Canada. And, um, and this book is just on what people do with paper, making paper and making stuff with paper. And they always give you a beautiful thing that folds out that can be like a poster. But this, I mean, some of this stuff, I, I mean, this is made, this is paper, really, I don't know how. But let me show you this. That's not what I was going to, I got to show you the, and they talk about making paper and folding but I have to show you what this guy does. 
it is it blew most of it this is uh, this is another whole look i can't this is made out of paper she's made this typewriter out of paper i know i mean this is insane that's paper that she puts together glues and sews and makes these three-dimensional pieces of art i mean is, is that not mine reusing all materials okay look i mean this is all made out of oh my god it's just mind-blowing it just blows my mind and this is not a how-to book there's no how to do this there's just pictures of it done and i guess you could probably maybe go to a web website or look to see how to do it but this just blew this is not the one sewing machine can you believe that that's made out of paper and she even has a little drawer over here with the paper bobbins and scissors i did just that's all i can say my mind is blown oh teacup with spoon look but this is what i wanted to show you That made me think of it. This is this is this guy's origami. It's not paper mache. I know. He wets this paper and he somehow makes it. But look at these. This is his lion. Can you? That not amazing. He says that this is his favorite. I think my favorite work is the lion he did in 2012. Normally, I prefer doing simple origami. The lion is on the complex side. It took me near, nearly a year to create. Even after finishing the structure, shaping it was also quite difficult in that each time I folded, it would have a different result. But the look of it makes me satisfied the most. With it looking full of pride, I think I caught the essence of a lion without copying it exactly. It's real life appearance. He's got a swan, a dolphin. And then he kind of shows you how he paints the paper, wets the paper, folds the paper. But look at these. Are these not? I mean, they're mind. Look, look at the koi fish. Here's the lion here, a unicorn. Mice, the swan. It's that, I mean, I'm. it's just amazing. And then this woman making all this stuff out of paper, but this whole book, I mean, every page is like, what? How did they do that? It's just cool stuff. Rag and pulp. And this is from their encyclopedia of inspiration and i have art supplies i bought ceramics for my daughter-in-law i have vintage life i think i have printmaker i have ephemera and i don't have any of the i don't have these they're pretty pricey but they're like they're really reference books you know you go back and back and look at them again and again but i love them I know. And then, of course, this cover is also a poster. And it's two-sided, so you can open it up. Yeah. And the art supply one is it's just all these different people's art supplies. But this one made me think of that, so I wanted to show that to you. I'm still, I still haven't, I'm still, I'm still looking through it. I haven't completed looking at it because I can't, you know, when you stop to look at it, you just, I'd love to know how to build that, like typewriter. Oh, that 3D stuff, the origami stuff. No way. I mean, I can't do regular origami. I mean, I try and I'll have, I'll have, I'll be watching the YouTube origami and I'll have the speed set at like, 
I don't know, 0.5 where it's and I still can't follow it. It's my brain doesn't work that way. I'm dyslexic and so it's hard sometimes because I see things and I think that really I literally I think that's why I a lot of times things go down upside down um, well I shouldn't blame the dyslexia on upside down I blame that on not checking you know before I go I need to take a double check and make sure it's not upside down and a lot of times I forget so but I had a horrible time learning how to read Well, all my friends were out playing in the summertime. I was in remedial reading. Look. But I've become a reader as an adult. I can read. Not fast. But I have audio books. I listen to a lot of books. While I'm crafting. So there's ways around it. And my mother would get so frustrated with me. Oh, my Lord. My poor mother. Long-suffering, right? I'd read out loud. Constantly transposing, you know. I guess that was my biggest problem. Transposing letters. Was, was sore. Things like that. And I think that must have affected my math skills, too, because <laughs> that was another nightmare. I think I conquered the reading, but I never conquered the math. And I hear most of us, so many of us in here all, all say, you know, math, ah, you know, we all have a conniption when math is involved and everyone avoids it like the plague. And and I wonder, I, as as girls growing up, you know, I don't think math was encouraged by the educational system for girls, you know. I'm just saying. Girls were not, oh, it's totally crooked. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I don't think girls were really encouraged to sign up for sciences. But yeah, I I guess I I was aware of the word dys dyslexic, but maybe not until I was adult. That's a good point. I don't know whether as a I don't know. That's true. What the terminology was, you know, that's a good point, Gail. But there must have been a reading teacher at school that decided that I needed extra help in reading and put me in remedial reading. Someone made that decision. That's still not good. And you know what? I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. Just let go. Let it go. All right. Now, I think I'm going to go to this blue. I'm going to use the blue. All right. I'm going to use the blue because I like blue. Blue and gold, can't go wrong with that combination. Any blue, any gold is a winner. And, and this will break up the swans. And then we'll come in with some black and white that have swans. This is fans. This is fans. Go fan yourself. Whoops. would be helpful if I followed the, the little lines that I drew down. I think whoever said painter's tape was on the right track. Big, fat, blue painter's tape. Something that I could see. Isn't that pretty? Let's take this 
here. All right, here we go. I'm going around. And I got to be more careful because this is old stuff. And it's going to tear. I'm going too fast. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Okay. Let's do this nice and slow. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. I'll have another washi thing just of the little strips of broken washi, huh? Yeah, I should just go like that instead of ripping it out. Just stay right close to the... No, no, no. Don't you, don't you do that. You're starting to do that over here. I saw you. I saw you do that. No, no, no. Hmm. See, it's trying to, it's trying to. Oh, look at that. Ah, oh, sneaky. Sneaky. It's kind of caught up on the elastic. Okay. I guess the older it gets, the more tricky it gets. And the wider it is, is the more problematic it is. But I don't... I think we got it. Do we? No, nope, a little bit more. Another little zhuzh, 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 zhuzh. Okay, we got it, we got it, we got it. Okay, here we go. Yes. Voila. That's a pretty blue. And that kind of breaks up all the green. I can get my finger out of the way. Okay, and I'm still in frame. That's a good thing. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. And of course, kids that were, they were just called hyperactive, you know, there wasn't any... You do well with math now? Yeah, I do too. Uh, I actually, I don't know, how many are familiar with a guy by the name of Saul Khan? And he started something called Khan Academy. Um, he basically developed it. His niece was having trouble with math. So he started helping her with math. And out of that tutoring of his niece, he created a math academy called Khan Academy where he basically did math and he would go through math with problems and explain them and then Khan Academy just exploded just exploded and he offers all kinds of math uh, and then he added history to it and I'm assuming he's still going strong. I use him a lot when I was teaching. He was a great resource even as a teacher. And I would assign my students, you know, to watch, you know, his segment on maybe one of the causes of World War I. And he always did maps and, and, and drew with different colored markers, very engaging. And it's called Khan Academy, K-H-A-N. And I went back, Gail, and took basic algebra all over again at Khan Academy. And I loved every minute of it. It's amazing going back on something that you struggled with as an adult, obviously with a totally different attitude. That's why I think it's so fun learning new stuff as an old person, because my head's in the right place. I mean, I am eager to learn new things and new techniques. 
my, you know what I mean? And I just think it that comes with being an older person that it's, it's just a different, you're bringing a whole different attitude to the table. When I went back to graduate school to get my master's, because in New York, you have to have a master's degree to be permanently certified to teach, right? And I was obviously, I was the oldest person in all my classes. And um, it was hard because I was working full time. And after working all day, I'd have to drive 60 miles to the university. And a lot of these classes met usually twice a week, but for three hours at a clip. And I remember taking a, a graduate course in Chaucer because I needed graduate English credits or whatever. So I signed up for a course on Chaucer. And the whole class was about Canterbury Tales. That's it. A whole semester just on Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. We read the tales. We read them in the original original uh, Mid Midland English that he wrote it in. And um, I read it, the original English that he wrote it in. I read it in a translated version. And I read Cliff Notes. Yes, I read Cliff Notes. Um, I read it every which way I could to understand it. Look at that. Now we have the swans back. The cranes, rather. We had the first test. And I was terrified. Well, the whole, the whole experience. That was the second. I guess that was the second semester. The first semester was just, you know, horrific. And um, we had the test. And I ended up, I got the highest grade in the class. I was pretty impressed with myself. Yeah. And he was, oh my, uh, he had an Italian last name and he was from the Boston area, and he had a thick, thick New England accent. I loved that guy. Not because he gave me a, I just, he was a great, I took, a, I, subsequently, I took a second course from him. He was really a good teacher. But I, I got a 94 on that test. And I was pretty damn proud of myself. I get it? Did I get it? Oh, yeah. That's the way to cut it, though, with the exacto blade, but you got to be exact. <laughs> Look how pretty that is. Can you, let me see. See how that's going? Ooh. All right. This is going a lot faster because all of these tapes are on the wide side. So... Let's see, where am I? There we are. And then I moved to Florida. We don't have to have a master's degree. And I hadn't finished it. So I ended up finishing my master's degree here in Florida. And St. Bonaventure accepted the two grad, the six credits that I needed. I wasn't going to finish it. And then I had a friend, a woman that I had met at the school, and she said, that's just ridiculous, not finishing this. And you're so close. You need to finish it. And she was right. And I'm glad I did. But having that piece of paper doesn't make you a better teacher, I can tell you that much. I would see people that were taking courses 
It was a program that was designed for people that wanted to change careers and they thought they wanted to go into education. Oh, my God. They did not have the personalities. I don't like that. I mean, teaching is, a lot of it's acting. You know, you're putting on, you have to obviously know your content. And I really, if it's anything but math, I think anybody can really, anybody can learn the content, you know? And then you got to figure out how to make it interesting, right? So I taught five periods a day. And it was like putting on five shows, five 48-minute shows every day, five days a week. And it was like, how engaging can I be? How can I keep their attention for 48 minutes? And some of these people that were taking this, thinking they were going to change their careers and go into education, I would look at them and think to myself, as soon as they stand up in front of a classroom, they're going to be chewed up and spit out in pieces. You got to be a bit of a comedian. And you know what? The most important thing you have to do is not to take yourself too seriously. You got to have a good sense of humor to be a teacher. I did a, okay, mass in the ed to move from classroom to counseling. And my, I have a master's of science, an MSED. Yeah. And then you move to counseling. I could, I could never be a counselor. I just not, I'm not, I'm not empathetic enough. And my, when I kids, my students had problems, I would say, go see the counselor. You know, I would not, because that can be, yeah, depending on, all, all, you know, all ages. But junior high, oh my gosh, every day is a, you know, every day is a, a new tragedy. And if you get involved in that, Oh, my God. Talk about a rat hole. All right. Now, I have, this is very, very birdie. And I have this, which is birdie. And I have, that's the one I just put down. And I have this. And this, and this. So I'm thinking maybe I'll finish it off with this. Or maybe stick these in the middle. Maybe like this and not use that. And I'll do it, I mean, add another, and maybe do that and have those. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I'll do as they roll. Yeah, I think that'll work. What age group were you counseling, Julie? I mean, counselors, I mean, Typically, there's, you know, one, the ratio for counselor to student population is horrible. When I moved to Florida, I, I, I ended up teaching in a small private they called them they, they, they said they were a college preparatory school and I guess they were. Everyone who graduated went to college. Um, and 
and there was about 500 students. That's crooked, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it. And I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to go across. I think that'll be a different. And it was 7 through 12. Okay. Okay to 8. Wow. Okay. All righty. Mm -hmm. And the school has, this school, particular school that I taught at for the last 19 years of my teaching career, uh, they have two campuses. They had a lower school that was pre-K through six. And then the upper campus was where I was, was seven through 12. So I taught in New York public school and then went to Florida private school. I actually never set foot in a Florida public school. I heard they were really bad, but I don't know. I have no reference there at all. And most of my kids, my students were children of doctors and lawyers and car dealership owners. A lot of car de de dealership owners. Ah, I think maybe I should do that instead of this because this looks so out of place. Yeah, I'll do that and then we'll call it a day. And see, I went too fast. I got to remember that the older they are, the more they want to split on you. Mm -hmm. All right. My youngest son is a special ed teacher in Utah. And he has, he's like a resource room teacher. And he's, he has, I think second through, second through sixth grade kids. And you know, I mean, I mean, for special ed, you know, that's, that's a lot of IEPs and parent conferences and, you know, all of that fun stuff. But you have to be, yeah, you got to be a certain type of person that can work with special ed kids. My ex-husband, his father, was a special ed teacher. So I think. Okay, folks. Okie dokie. Let's cut this and call it a day. Ta-da! You followed in mom's footsteps? That's cool. There you go. Well, my ex-husband, when I married him, he was a lawyer. And that's another whole story for another day. But so there you go. So we got this. And we got a lot done. And this. Ooh. And then this one that I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm so, I have very mixed feelings about. And I don't know. And then this one. But I don't know. I'm almost thinking of covering this all up and making it brown. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like stick this right here or this right here and just cover that all up and, and not, and just, cause this just is too glaring to me, but you'll have to, 
tune in and see when I post these pictures what I decided to do. But I'm a feeling that I'm a, I'm a feeling that this might look better across here. And um, yeah, because I don't like this. All right, thank you so much for hang make copies first. Thank you, Janice. Uh, once again, Janice has a brilliant yes. Thank you. Good idea. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I'm definitely going to take a, I'll take some of the pictures. But thank you again so much for hanging out with me. Um, and you all be good. And if you can't be good, then be careful. And I'll see you around the internet. Have a good day and the rest of the week. Bye. Bye. Bye.